It would have been difficult for the neocons to use their foreign policy for restraints of Colin Powell State Department without the successful agitation of the Rupert Murdoch Empire. Max Boot was satisfied as he explained, quote, neoconservatives believe in using American might to promote American ideals abroad, close quote. This attitude is a far cry from the advice of the founders who advocated no entangling alliances and neutrality as the proper goal of American foreign policy. Let there be no doubt, those in the neocon camp had been anxious to go to war against Iraq for a decade. They justified the use of force to accomplish their goals even if it required preemptive war. If anyone doubts this assertion, they need only read of their strategy in a clean break, a new strategy for securing the realm. Although they felt morally justified in changing the government in Iraq, they knew that public support was important and justification had to be given to pursue the war. Of course, a threat to us had to exist before the people and the Congress would go along with war. The majority of Americans became convinced of this threat, which in actuality never really existed. Now we have the ongoing debate over the location of weapons of mass destruction. Where was the danger? Was all this killing and spending necessary? How long will this nation building and dying go on? When will we become more concerned about the needs of our own citizens than the problems we sought in Iraq and Afghanistan? Who knows where we'll go next? Iran, Syria, North Korea. At the end of the Cold War, the neoconservatives realized a rearrangement of the world was occurring in that our superior economic and military power offered them a perfect opportunity to control the process of remaking the Middle East. It was recognized that a new era was upon us, and the neocons welcomed Francis Fukuyama's end of history declaration. To them, the debate was over. The West won, the Soviets lost, old-fashioned communism was dead, long live the new era of neoconservatism. The struggle may not be over, but the West won the intellectual fight they reasoned. The only problem is that the neocons decided to define the philosophy of the victors. They have been amazingly successful in their efforts to control the debate over what Western values are and by what methods they will be spread throughout the world. Communism surely lost a lot with the breakup of the Soviet Empire, but this can hardly be declared a victory for American liberty as the founders understood it. Neoconservatism is not the philosophy of free markets and a wise foreign policy. Instead, it represents big government welfare at home and a program of using our military might to spread their version of American values throughout the world. Since neoconservatives dominate the way the U.S. government now operates, it behooves us all to understand their beliefs and goals. The breakup of the Soviet system may well have been an epic event, but to say that the views of the neocons are the unchallenged victors and that all we need to do is to wait for their implement implementation is a capitulation to the controlling of the forces of history that many Americans are not yet ready to concede. There is surely no need to do so. There is now a recognized philosophic connection between modern-day neoconservatives and Irving Kristol, Leo Strauss, and Machiavelli. This is important in understanding that today's policies and the subsequent problems will be with us for years to come if these policies are not reversed. Not only did Leo Strauss write favorably of Machiavelli, Michael Ledeen, a current leader of the neoconservative movement, did the same in 1999 in his book with the title, Machiavelli on Modern Leadership, Why Machiavelli Iron Rules Are as Timely and Important Today Five Centuries Ago. Ledeen is indeed an influential neocon theorist whose views get a lot of attention today in Washington. His book on Machiavelli, interestingly enough, was passed out to members of Congress attending a political strategy meeting shortly after its publication and at just about the same time a clean break was issued. In Ledeen's most recent publication, The War Against the Terror Masters, he re reiterates his beliefs he outlined in 1999. He specifically